Hello, welcome to Storytime at AgWorks. My name is Michael, and today we'll be reading Finding Dory. Let's keep swimming. Hi, I'm Dory, said the baby fish. I suffer from short-term memory loss. Dory's parents, Jenny and Charlie, smiled. They'd taught Dory to say that to help keep their daughter safe. Do you want to play hide and seek? asked Charlie. Dory started to count, but before long, she couldn't remember why she was counting. Her parents came out of hiding. Oh, did I forget again? It's okay, said Jenny. Charlie gave Dory a hug. No biggie, kelp cake. One evening, Dory swam too close to a powerful current, the undertow, and was carried far away. She asked every fish she saw for help to get home, but no one knew where Dory lived. As the years went by, Dory forgot what she was looking for. Just keep swimming, she told herself. One day, out in the open ocean, Dory heard a clownfish named Marlin shouting, A white boat! They took my son! Help me! Dory told Marlin she knew which way the boat went. Well, follow me, she said. Dory helped Marlin find his son, Nemo. When their adventure was over, Dory went to live with her new friends on a pretty coral reef. Dory finally had a place she could call home. Whenever Dory wandered too close to the edge of the reef, Marlin was there to keep her safe. One day, Dory volunteered to help the school teacher, Mr. Ray, take his students on a field trip to see the great stingray migration. Thousands of rays were swimming to their home. Dory was amazed by the sight. She moved in for a closer look. But the movement of the rays created a strong undertow. Dory was picked up, spun around, and thrown onto the sand. She was okay, but the shakeup made Dory remember a place called the Jewel of Morro Bay, California. And there, there was more. I remember my family, she yelled. She wanted to leave for Morro Bay right away. Marlin and Nemo agreed to go too. Dory, Marlin, and Nemo rode the ocean currents to Morro Bay. As soon as they got there, Dory started shouting, Mom! Dad! The noise disturbed a community of hermit crabs. Shh! They hissed. Suddenly, a huge roar came from a sunken shipping container. Mommy? asked Dory. Moments later, a giant squid came after Dory. That is definitely not Mommy! Marlin, Nemo, and Dory swam as fast as they could. Dory got stuck in a plastic ring, but the three friends escaped into the kelp forest. Dory peeked above the surface and saw a huge aquarium. Suddenly, a human pulled her out of the water, put her in a boat, and zoomed off. Don't worry, Dory! We'll find you! Dory was then taken to Quarantine, a place for injured fish. A clever octopus named Hank told Dory she was at the Marine Life Institute, the jewel of Morro Bay. I'm from an exhibit, Dory wondered. Well, I have to get there. But Dory was wearing a tag that meant she'd soon be trucked to an aquarium in Cleveland, Ohio. Hank wanted to go, but he needed a tag. The octopus promised to help find Dory's family, but he wanted something in return. Well, how about if I give you this tag? Dory asked. Great idea, said Hank. Hank scooped Dory up in a coffee pot and took her to a map. There were so many exhibits. Well, how can you do this whole park in one day? Pick one. Dory saw a purple shell on the map, and Dory had another memory. 
Her home had purple shells. When a human came down the hallway, Hank camouflaged himself while Dory jumped into a bucket of fish that was labeled Destiny. <laughs> Dory was put into a pool that was the home of a whale shark named Destiny. When Dory asked for help, Destiny realized she knew the little blue fish. You and I were friends. We'd talk through the pipes. We were pipe pals, said Destiny. Destiny said Dory was from the open ocean exhibit. And just then, Hank splashed into the tank. Dory wanted his help getting into the exhibit. Well, you can go through the pipes, said Destiny. And the pipes led to every part of the Institute. But Dory was afraid of getting lost. You have to go by yourself, said Hank. There's no other way. Hank's words stirred another memory. Dory recalled her dad saying, There's always another way. Dory spotted an empty stroller. Hank turned the wheels while Dory navigated from a cup. Destiny had given Dory directions to the open ocean exhibit, but Dory had Hank make a wrong turn and they crashed into a shallow pool. At first, it was very quiet, but then small hands reached into the water. It was the touch pool. The kids pooled and poked every fish they could find. Hank skittered under a rock. Just keep swimming, said Dory. Dory led Hank across the pool, and there it was, the open ocean exhibit. Hank carried Dory in a cup and snuck into the exhibit building. He used his tentacles to swing across the sculptures that were suspended from the ceiling. I can't believe it. I'm going to see my parents, said Dory. Oh, I should have brought a gift. Why didn't I think of that? At last, Hank and Dory reached the top of the open ocean tank. Looks like this is it, kid, said Hank. Wait, I, I had something for you. <laughs> tag, said Hank with a smile. Dory gave the octopus the tag and slipped below the water. Oh, I hope I can find my parents, she said. Knowing you, Dory, I'm liking your chances. Then he let her go. Dory asked everyone she saw if they knew where her parents lived. As she came close to the bottom, Dory saw a line of shells. Those triggered another memory. The shells led Dory to her childhood home. But sadly, no one was there. As Dory looked around, she saw the undertow rushing into a pipe. It was the same one that had carried her away years before. Where's your tag? asked a crab. The crab said that all the blue tangs were tagged and taken to quarantine. They would soon be shipped to Cleveland. The fastest way to quarantine was through the pipes. The crab gave Dory directions. Two lefts and a right. Simple. But after she took the first left, Dory was lost. And she called to her pipe pal Destiny for help. Destiny! Destiny's friend Bailey, a beluga whale, used his echolocation to help Dory navigate through the pipes. But something else was in the pipes, too. Oh, it's coming for her, warned Bailey. Dory, swim the other way, screamed Destiny. Dory spun around just in time to see Marlin and Nemo. They'd been looking for Dory since she was taken out of the ocean. By the time Dory, Marlin, and Nemo got to quarantine, the blue tangs were about to be loaded onto the truck. Luckily, Hank was there to help them. Mom? Dad? called Dory, but her parents didn't answer. A friend of Dory's parents explained that years ago, Jenny and Charlie went to look for Dory but they never came back. <gasps> what? Gasped Dory. She couldn't believe her parents were gone. 
Just then, Hank dipped a coffee pot into the fish tank and pulled Dory out. But Hank was grabbed from behind by a staff member. The coffee pot fell on its side. Dory fell out and slid down the drain. Oh! The drain dumped Dory into the sea. She was all alone. Dory looked around for something, anything that might look familiar. Water, kelp, sand, shells. Well, I like shells, said Dory. And out of the distance, two fish appeared. They were her parents. Oh, Dory, cried Jenny. You found us. Oh, my baby, said Charlie. Let me look at you. Oh, mwah, mwah. Dory and her parents held each other tightly. Dory told them everything she could remember about where she'd been. Then she remembered Marlin and Nemo. She had to help save them. Dory called to Destiny for help, and Destiny and Bailey both jumped out of their pools and joined Dory in the ocean. The truck carrying Nemo and Marlin had left the Institute. Bailey used his echolocation to learn that the truck was headed for a bridge. Dory had to find a way to stop traffic and get onto that truck. A group of lovable otters were more than happy to help. They climbed up to the roadway. Destiny used her tail to flip Dory up to them. Cuddle party, she shouted. The delightful otters began hugging each other. The drivers hit their brakes. Oh, so cute, shouted a woman. The otters opened the truck's door. Hank put Dory in the tank with Marlin and Nemo. Oh, you came back. Well, of course. I couldn't leave my family, said Dory. Their happy reunion touched Hank. Just then, a loon scooped Marlin and Nemo up into a bucket and flew away. Dory wanted Hank to return to the ocean with her, not live in an aquarium. But the octopus liked the idea. Before the two could get out, the truck started to move. Hank took matters into his own ten tentacles. Hank climbed to the front and scared the drivers away. He grabbed the steering wheel, set a cup holding Dory on the dashboard, and stepped on the gas. I can't see, he yelled. Which way are we going? The ocean. It's straight ahead, said Dory but the road was blocked by police cars. Hank, I'm going to ask you to do something crazy. <laughs> I'm okay with crazy, said Hank. The, tr the truck plunged off the highway, and everyone inside was released back into the ocean. Come to Papa, yelled Charlie from below as everyone cheered. Dory's parents and friends all went to live on the coral reef. At last, Dory truly felt at home. She could swim to the edge of the reef and just enjoy the view. And soon, Dory and her parents were back to playing one of Dory's favorite games, hide and seek. <laughs>